Hey squad and welcome back to Installation X and today I'm giving you part two of my Halo Infinite gameplay reveal breakdown from the Xbox Game Showcase and as the thumbnail suggests we are talking about one thing and one thing only in this video and that is the graphics of the Halo Infinite demo from the Xbox Game Showcase. Now first and foremost I want to say a couple of things. I haven't scripted this video. I decided not to script it because I wanted to try and give my raw unedited just take on what we saw at the Xbox Game Showcase from Halo Infinite and kind of the reaction that there has been online because I think some of it is fair criticism but at the same time I think a lot of it is people being very anxious, being very tense. There's trolls, of course there's trolls and I just want to kind of bring things back down the level because that's how I like to do things here on Insation X. I don't kind of get too emotional with things. I kind of look at the bigger picture, kind of see the facts, see the criticisms, the positives, and take everything together and kind of combine it. And that's what we're going to be talking about. So the Halo Infinite demo basically left a lot to be desired around the graphics. And unfortunately, the other thing that we didn't really think about, or maybe a lot of people haven't really thought about, is this was the only real core gameplay we got to see at the event. So really, this was the gameplay that was holding up the burden of showcasing what the Xbox Series X is really capable of. And it actually turns out that what we were seeing was not actually captured on a Series X, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So I want to get kind of my personal criticisms out of the way first. Now, I know 343 are working very, very hard. Um, I know Microsoft are probably doing a job to help them out as well, especially in the middle of the pandemic. And I will say this straight away. People have been kind of using the COVID-19 pandemic situation and saying that's not an excuse they're not using it as an excuse, but you need to understand the circumstances in which 343 are developing this game. They are trying to go through what a lot of people call, would call the crunch period of the game, and they're all working from home, and they've all had to transition from doing that. So it is fair and reasonable to say that the COVID-19 pandemic has factored in to the development of this game. There's no denying that. And it looks like from official announcements that ray tracing or the ray tracing update to um, Halo Infinite is going to get pushed back to allow extra times for the polish to then get this game out and running fully at full capacity with all the features at launch which is important so i wanted to get that away at first so criticisms wise there are a couple of things that i picked up now you might have picked up more things please let me know but these are kind of the, the the standard things that i picked up from the way i viewed it there were a few pop-in issues with shadows as you're going up the elevator so the elevator scene is supposed to be this kind of big open Here's what Halo Infinite looks like, here's how gorgeous it is. And there's a couple of things that were wrong with it, or off with it. One of it was the pop-in of the shadows lower down. Um, there was pop-ins at the clouds in the background. And the skybox, I think a lot of people were felt a little bit underwhelmed with the skybox itself. And now, I think we're going to see a very different skybox with the day-night cycle, which is seemingly going to be part of Halo Infinite. There is going to be a day-night cycle, which is really cool and that is obviously going to affect the lighting of the skybox and whatnot now i'm not too bothered about the skybox itself because at the end of the day i am more interested in what is actually going to be front and center with me um, i'm not going to spend loads and loads of time just staring into space so the skybox one i can deal with personally you might feel differently that's fine but the popping of the shadows in the class this is something that i think they need to rectify and they need to try and rectify quickly because at the end of the day, this is something that we are being promised with the Series X is not going to happen. This is a feature of the past. You know, worlds aren't going to need to have load-ins. They're not going to have pop-ins. They're going to be generated consistently with the power of the SSD and the, and the GPU and all the CPU and all this kind of stuff. So that is something that I think was the real, real... It was the obvious one. Like, if we were, if we were looking at it raw and not picking it apart, what is the one thing that 100% stood out? It was the pop-ins of those, those clouds at the background. For me, it was at least anyway. Now... The other things that I kind of felt, felt were a little bit off were some of the textures and lighting around some of the weapons and the enemies. Now, a lot of people kind of picked out the look of the AR. To be honest, I'm not really bothered by the look of the AR. I think it looks good. I think it looks fine. It's not super stylized and detailed like we've seen in the past because that's the criticism that we've had of Free for Free in the past. And I feel like a lot of this is kind of... They're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. If they go back to a more simplistic design they're being criticised for not being realistic enough. But if they go too realistic, like they did in 4 and 5, people were shitting on them for being too realistic. It needs to go back to being classic. Now, I think there is still a little bit that needs to be polished out here. I think they still need to add a little bit of um, 
just general metallic feel to some of the weapons, to the, the, a few scuffs. And if we look further down and later into the trailer, we can see that with the mangler. Now, the mangler clearly see we clearly see the textures and, and the scuffs and the, and the little bit of rough edges around the mangler, which I'm happy with. It's a simple design. It's got a bit of wear and tear. That I'm happy for that to be as a weapon. So hopefully, these are things that we can come in that can be added in later on. And the other thing that I was kind of a bit weirded out by was the part where Chief goes into the structure with the elite. Um, when we get to see the elite um, animation and uh, style and design for the first time, that seemed a little bit flat. It didn't really pop as much as I was expecting it to. Um, again, I think that's a lighting issue. Um, but overall, I think the big positives I took away from this were the art style overall I love. I love the art style and I love the art direction of this game. It's bringing me back to those original um, CE vibes but at the same time it's still feeling new, it's still feeling fresh, it's still feeling modern um, and I like that, I like that a lot. I think there's a lot of great shots in this demo, there's a lot of great things in this demo. I thought the wildlife was really really cool, even the kind of rodents and mammals that are scurrying around on the floor just as Chief kind of steps out of that pelican the first time before he goes and attacks the grunt, that looks great. Um, I think there are a lot of great shots in this demo, the shot of the the crashed, um, I'm presuming it's gonna be a frigate, but someone who's more up to date with the lore will probably correct me on that. Like, that's kind of jutting out that a lot of people kind of thought was the infinity. It's way too small to be the infinity. It's not the infinity. Um, that looked great. I think the warthog jump looked great as well. There was lots of really cool lighting stuff going on with the water that was around on the floor. I think overall, the character designs I'm happy with. Like, a lot of people have been going in on the brute uh, design. I don't have a problem with the brute design. I think the the Halo 3 brute design was very different to the Halo 2 brute design. Like the Halo 2 brute design was showing brutes that were very hairy. Then all of a sudden you go into the Halo 3 brute design and the brute design is much less hair but they've got like, kind of like that weird mohawk going on and, and the kind of gruffy stuff around it and they're much more snarly. Then you go into Halo Reach and the brute design in Halo Reach I think absolutely sucked. It was, the, I think, the worst brute design that there has been so far in Halo. And, by the way, Halo 2, Halo 3, and Halo Reach were all developed by Bungie, and they all changed the brute design. So, I think I'm happy with where the brutes are at. Now, a lot of people have been making the comparisons between the blur cutscenes of, like, Atriox and Pavium and Voridus, and comparing it to what we're seeing in-game, saying, what's happened here? It's been a massive regression. Can I please just remind people that the, the renders that you're seeing of Atriox and Pavium and Vorus, Vorus in particular, they are blurred cutscenes. They are rendered CGI cutscenes. They're not native to the game. They do not run in game. They, Blur were brought in for Halo 2 and Halo, um, for Halo 2 Anniversary and Halo Wars 2 specifically for that reason. They were not running in game. They were completely rendered as CGI cutscenes. Now, taking us back to the cutscenes. I think the cutscenes so far in Halo Infinite look great. They look gorgeous. The the, the art design of Reach's um sorry, not Reach's Chiefs. Um uh, Mjolnir armor is great so far. I absolutely love it. I think the the kind of pilot design and then how his facial animations are working look great. I think the cutscenes look brilliant. And there's just a lot of really, really good stuff here as well as some of the things and the criticisms that people kind of picked out. Now the facts of this that have come out later is that Aaron Greenberg on Twitter um, came out and kind of was doing his PR job at the end of the day. Aaron's very good at this um, and I think it's important to stress that th this was apparently an older build of the game. Um, and it was running on a PC that had specs that were very, very close, if not matching that of the Series X. Now, you can take that as you will. I see that as Aaron coming out and being front up and trying to damage control. A lot of people may see that very, very differently. At the end of the day, you view it how you want to view it, but that's how I viewed it. And if we're thinking about this as an older build of the game, there has been talk of it's a January build floating around, but I can't really fully verify that, so I wouldn't trust that information. But if this was going to be part of the E3 demo, the E3 demo was going to take, part, uh, take place at least a month previous to what we see now. It's going to take place in the middle of June. If it's an older build, it could be even a month or two earlier when they're actually starting to put the show together that that, that build, that demo, was submitted by 343 into the um, show. And at the end of the day, Microsoft would have had to have approved this demo. 
they would have had to say, yep, we're happy for you to run this demo as part of our show. So potentially, this build could have been made in, I don't know, June, May, April, maybe even later. That gives free for free. As of this point, we're at, we are a minimum of three months away from the release of the game. And technically, if this is an older build, then they could have had even more, four, five, maybe even six months since that build to work on the game. So I just want to make this very, very clear to people. I'm not worried about this game, okay? And I think it is incredibly unfair to judge a game now. If the game, if we see, saw the game on Thursday and the game was to release this weekend, yes, there's a problem and it deserves criticism and we need to say what the hell's going on, what the hell's going on with the Series X, what the hell's going on with this game. However, there's still time between now and launch. Now, people might say, this is how the game's going to look. It's going to look not nowhere near as good as it should have done. Free for free suck, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. You are entitled to that opinion. But I still believe in free for free and within their development process to say a lot of these issues can hopefully be ironed out with time to polish them people may think differently that's absolutely fine i think the art style is important to understand here a lot of people have been coming out and saying and making the comparison between sony's um exclusives those third person action adventure games that are very very stylized and very realistic okay that's the approach that sony and a lot of their first party studios are taking and that's absolutely fine that's what they're very very good at but Free for Free have made a conscious decision here. They've decided to go back to a more of a classic original art style. We need time with the game to adjust to the differences between Halo 5 and Halo Infinite, right? At the end of the day, if you were to show someone who is not a fan of the original trilogy, who's never played any of the previous Halo games before, and you were to show them Halo 5 and Halo Infinite, yeah, it, Halo Infinite is going to look like it is a regression. Okay, it looks like it's taking a step backwards. It's not really pushing the limits of next gen. Next gen isn't just hyper realistic photogenic graphics. If those games and those developers want to make those games, then they're free to. And Xbox is going to get those games. Hellblade 2 is going to be one of those games. Forza Motorsport and Forza Horizon 5 are going to be those games. We're likely to see that from Avowed, which was also announced. We're probably, hopefully, likely to see it from Fable as well. I'd love for Fable to go down that real, hyper-realistic route. And we haven't even heard about any of the other games coming from some of the Xbox Game Studios that weren't even at the show. So, Microsoft and Xbox Game Studios are going to develop those types of games. Halo, for me, doesn't need to be this graphical powerhouse. I don't need Halo to look as good as The Last of Us 2. I don't need Halo to look as good as Red Dead Redemption 2. Because for me, that would feel out of place for Halo. Now, I know people might differ on that. We all have various different opinions on the graphics. We all have various different opinions on the art style. But that's just my personal take. So I'm not looking for Halo to be that. I'm looking for Halo to set itself in its art style and be as beautiful and gorgeous as it can within that art style. So if that means that the brute designs or the jackal designs or the grunt designs are more simplistic, but they still look amazing, I'm okay with that. I don't need a super detailed grunt like we had in Halo 5 because that wasn't what for me Halo was about and I like the idea that they're sticking with this art style it's now up to free for free to make this art style look as good and as gorgeous as it possibly can running natively on the Series X with all the bells and whistles that we've been talked about with the Xbox Velocity architecture with the power of the SSD with the CPU the GPU and the rest of it I think what also didn't help and I think we need to address this as well is Microsoft allowing this demo to come out in the state that it was okay it's clearly a work in progress and that has been claimed by aaron greenberg it's clearly still being developed it's still being worked on to this very day and it will be worked on day in day out week in week out until the launch of the game and the console however i think microsoft do need to take a bit of responsibility and say this could have been avoided instead a lot of the talk on twitter has been people arguing about the tiniest of details and the, the most low res screenshots and screen grabs that people have taken. Instead, we're missing the whole point, which is what I addressed in part one, of how awesome this gameplay was. The gameplay ran super, super smooth. It was so flawless. It looked brilliant. There were a few things here. The phantom animations didn't really work here and they were a bit wonky. That's fine. But overall, the actual gameplay that we saw, how the game is going to feel and play for us when we have it in, in our hands with the controller, playing it on hopefully our nice fancy monitors and screens that can run this at 4K60, this game is going to run brilliantly. And I'm going to say this, and I might take some flack for it, but at the end of the day, 
I do not play Halo for how Halo looks. There are much better games that look better than Halo. And there were games back in the day when CE, Halo 2, Halo 3 were out that looked way better than those games. If you would compare Modern Warfare 2 and Halo 3, which were kind of the two big shooters at the time, a lot of people would turn around and say, Modern Warfare 2 looks a lot better because that was the direction that Call of Duty was going down. That was not the direction of Halo 3. That's absolutely fine, okay? At the end of the day, Gameplay is king, and I'm going to say this for the entirety that I run Installation X, which hopefully is for a very, very long time, and I will say it whether how small or how big I may ever get. Gameplay is king. I am playing Halo Infinite for how good the game will play, for the weapon sandbox, for the environment sandbox, for the enemy variants, for the story. That's what I'm playing Halo for. I'm not playing Halo for how gorgeous of a game this looks. If it's gorgeous and it looks great and the graphical fidelity is amazing, then for me, that's an added bonus. But at the end of the day, my Halo experience isn't going to be ruined by a low res, one millisecond screenshot of Craig the Brute. Like, that's not gonna ruin Halo for me. As long as Craig the Brute is a really cool enemy to fight against, which he clearly is, because he looked great in the uh, in the show, because I can't believe I'm referring to him as Craig now. This is how mental this meme's become. But it's gameplay. As long as we're not seeing screen tearing and the graphics breaking down and the frame rate bombing and all this kind of stuff which is going to affect the experience of the game, then for me graphics come later. That can be worked on. Um, so at the end of the day, that is just my thoughts and opinions on the graphics. If you agree or you disagree, please let me know in the comments. Obviously keep it respectful with one another. I'm all about having a discussion and at the end of the day, you can agree to disagree. That is absolutely fine. We don't have to prove everyone right all the time. Get it out of the way, have your peace, discuss about it, but at the end of the day, everyone here hopefully loves Halo and we want what's best for Halo and we want this game to launch in November and be an absolutely amazing game, which I still believe it will be. Um, I would highly recommend, if you haven't done so already, to go back and watch the Xbox Game Showcase on Xbox's channel um, in the official 4K60 stream. It makes things pop so much better on the 4K60. I watched it here. Um, in my setup on my 1080p TV, which is to be fair is an old TV now, I'm upgrading to a monitor later on, later on in the autumn. But I then re-watched it downstairs on my 4K TV and boy, it popped way, way better on the 4K screen. It looks much better, much cleaner, much more colourful, so I'd highly recommend that. Well squad, that pretty much sums up everything I've got to say about the Halo Infinite campaign demo. Hopefully we'll get more information very soon, which I will cover in full here at Installation X. If you enjoyed the video, then please make sure you leave a like, head over to Installation X and subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications for more Xbox content. And remember, I'm Sykes, and for more on Halo Infinite and all things Xbox, stay tuned to Installation X. Bye guys.